William Byron wins, and the NASCAR short track package is up for debate. Once again, not much of a debate. We know what's wrong, but we're going to get into it. Coming up next. Almost missed with the finger point there. Rookie move. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing good today. All right, William Byron gets it done in Martinsville. In fact, all of the Hendrick cars were really good there. And you can tell this was a big race for Hendrick. You know they probably went, uh, spared no expense, we'll at least say, uh, to get these cars right because all four cars were running good. In fact, they ran good enough that you got the one, two, three finish there. Uh, and the, the racing at, at the very front at the end of the race was good. Uh, but the racing overall wasn't great, so that's going to be the overwhelming uh, topic on this particular video. But wanted to give credit to, to William Byron once again. Win number three on the season and a strong start to the season for him, uh, Hendrick, and Chevrolet. And of course, also before I move on, wanted to mention that William Byron, since we've gotten this next-gen car, has been the best driver uh, since we've gotten the next-gen car. So I wanted to throw that in there too as well. All right, now let's move on to the short track package. And my only question about the short track package is this to NASCAR, is this the way it's going to be? Is this just going to be the short track package from here on out? Because if it is, I don't think it's going to bring a lot of fans to the racetrack. I think a lot of fans miss the old way that net racing was done on short tracks when NASCAR was there. I don't think that they necessarily like this new package. And the problem is simple. We saw an answer and a solution to the problem in Bristol and we need tire fall off. Tire fall off, it's not a big secret anymore. Now, there are many ways of going about getting that tire fall off. You could add more horsepower. A lot of people have been very vocal that they want more horsepower, whether it needs to be 900 or 1,000 or whatever. More horsepower is one way to have significant tire fall off. So that is one option. And the teams have said already that it will not cost them any extra money to build the engines to have more horsepower than it costs them right now to build the engines to have less horsepower. So horsepower is one option out there. The next option, of course, is the tires themselves, whether we go with a softer compound. Right now, the compound they run is so hard that they go for as much maximum aero downforce as possible uh, because they know that, that, that these tires just won't wear off, right? We saw Joey Logano in this race take two tires, and he was able to hold on for over half of that tire run, uh, was able to hold the leaders behind him. So the tire fall off just isn't there uh, relative to what we saw in Bristol and relative to what we've seen in the past that creates good short track racing. The other option with the tires is to put grooves in them to limit the amount of grip you have. Uh, a groove tire, uh, if, if you design a groove tire specifically not to have a lot of grip, uh, obviously that would be another way of going about it. So you could have the same width because the width is an issue too. The wider the tire, the more grip you're going to have. Uh, so putting those grooves into the tires would be another way of going about it to reduce the grip and have tire fall off uh, where the cars are sl uh, sliding around and stuff like that. So that is another option. And then, of course, there's the option to uh, just do nothing at all and, and keep uh, doing what you're doing, keep playing with, uh, I don't know, I don't know, what, whatever NASCAR has changed here recently. I can't even remember. It's been so many, so many different things they've changed that haven't worked. So you can co continue to, like, try these aerodynamic tweaks and all the things that NASCAR are trying aerodynamically on the short tracks. Uh, or you can, like, do one of the three things mentioned. But like I said, my only question to NASCAR at this point is, is this the way it's going to be and we just deal with it from here on out? Or should we actually expect you to do something to the tires to make the short tracks fun again? Because I remember back in the day, Richmond was a race you never wanted to miss. Now Richmond is a race that people are calling for either one date removed or get both dates removed. I remember there was a time back in the day where you went to Richmond and, and you just weren't going to miss that race. Same thing with Bristol. Uh, there was a time when you went to Bristol and the stands were typically uh, really well packed. Uh, not necessarily for the first race at Bristol. The night race, always a sellout still, but uh, the first race now, uh, not getting the attendance it got. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. NASCAR knows what the problem is. They know the solution. Uh, we need tire fall off. We saw it at Bristol. That race was great. We don't need necessarily that significant a tire fall off, uh, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, tire fall off is what you need to make the short tracks uh, as fun as they were back in the day and enough. That's uh, I'm just going to get off the topic now. 
So basically, since I lit off with Bad Race, I will continue with Bad Race right here. And we'll go to 34th position. Austin Dillon lost power steering and had to uh, just physically do it himself uh, for, 30, for the last 200 laps. He ends up in 34th place there. Christopher Bell uh, ends up in 35th. I bet he wished he didn't even just, uh, just didn't even go to this race. It was a rough day for Christopher Bell. And uh, John Hunter Nemechek, who managed to get into the leader's way every single time in every way he could possibly, finally ends his race when uh, the tire blew or the, the brake exploded or whatever. Uh, he ends up in 36th place but yeah watching it live like John Hunter Nemechek was holding up the leaders quite often and I actually got punted a couple of times because uh, he just wouldn't move out of the way for the leaders uh, as he was going uh, laps down there there was, of course, people that had good races. William Byron gets his third win on the season. Kyle Larson in second and Chase Elliott in third. The 1-2-3 Hendrick at Martinsville the first time. I think that that's ever been done. Bubba Wallace sneaks in there in fourth place. Uh, he is really good at Martinsville. And uh, at one point in this race, it looked like uh, he was going to have the car to beat. Ryan Blaney, uh, I don't know what happened to Ryan Blaney, but he had a fast car at the end of the race. Was expecting him to be up there sooner. Joey Logano with that two-tire two strategy early on showed that there wasn't enough tire fall off. Uh, and he did well with his two tires. He ends up in sixth place. Tyler Reddick, a nice seventh place finish there for him. Uh, Alex Bowman, the other Hendrick car, finishes in eighth. They were all really good. Not, not sure exactly what happened to Bowman there. If they made the wrong adjustment, if it was a pit stop or something like that. Ryan Priest, nice solid day for him. They definitely needed that run uh, for the 41 car. And his teammate, Stuart Haas' teammate there in 10th place, Chase Briscoe. Stuart Haas continues their turnaround this season. Denny Hamlin ends up in 11th place. Uh, he pitted late. Uh, I was told when I did the live stream, obviously I was there live, but on the live stream when he told me uh, that his pit crew sent him in a message to just do the opposite of what Hendrick did, so that's why he pitted late. He ends up 11th. Eric Jones, good run for him, ends up 12th. Todd Gilliland, 13th. Ross Chastain, 14th. And Chris Busher ends up 15th. One thing I noticed when I was looking live there was the 16th place finisher, Kyle Busch. They seem to have missed the setup uh, in the middle of the race. But at the beginning of the race, obviously qualified 11th, he was running really good the first the first part of the race. And then somewhere in the middle part of the race, I don't know if they got off with the adjustments or the setup or something. But at the end of that race, when he was fighting to stay on the lead lap, if you look at this overlay right here from, from uh, the NASCAR analytics, auto racing analytics, I should say, had the final 50 laps in the cup race at Martinsville been based on fourth quarter median lap speed data alone. This is roughly where the top 15 fastest cars would have finished on the track. And you see from that graphic right there that Kyle Busch would have been in third place. So RCR has struggled on the short tracks all season. And it looks like they might have found something there for this race at Martinsville, at least on the 18. We don't know about the three car because obviously he didn't have his power steering. So we can't really make a judgment on whether or not they found it up there. But the, the fact that the 18 has found something on a short track, definitely a very positive note for the RCR gang. What's up, RCR gang? Met some uh, RCR guys out there at uh, the uh, Martinsville race, so that was really cool, too. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's pretty much all I got for you on this one. Uh, oh, let's get to the points real quick, then we'll close it out. Kyle Larson takes the lead at 309 points. Martin Trix Jr. is now in second place at 295. Denny Hamlin third. William Byron fourth. Ryan Blaney in fifth place. Chase Elliott uh, up two spots to sixth place. Ty Gibbs drops three. He is in seventh. Ross Chastain is in eighth. And then rounding out your 16 is going to be Tyler Reddick, Alex Bowman, Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, Chris Buescher, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, and Chase Briscoe. And your guys on the outside looking in are going to be Daniel Suarez, Brad Keselowski, John Hunter Nemechek, and Eric Jones. But what's interesting there is that Daniel Suarez, with one win on the season, is now out of the top 16 in points. So that is going to be something that you need to look at going forward because as it stands right now, Chase Briscoe would actually be the man out and Daniel Suarez would be the man in. So uh, the points is about a quarter of the way through the season, I would say. Uh, the points are starting to uh, get interesting, so we'll keep track of them as it goes forward. All right, for real, this is the end of it uh, this time. Sorry this video got out late. I was exhausted from this weekend. Uh, if, if, you, if you follow me, uh, I guess on uh, I guess I was just putting it up in Discord, but uh, but yeah, we had the uh, late model race at uh, Orange County. So basically, from Thursday to Sunday, I've gone with uh, with minimal sleep. So uh, I crashed pretty hard today. So sorry, this one is getting out here late. And uh, yeah, we did we did not have a good run at Orange County. Uh, so uh, but yeah, it was the Martinsville race. I did have a good time there, even though the racing the race for the lead was pretty exciting. But other than that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling. All right. I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you want to join, would love to have your subscription. If, if you're already subscribed, you know, I appreciate you guys as well. And if you got a question or comment, leave it down in the comment section. If you want to help the uh, store to the merch, the merch link store is in the description. I'm tired. Uh, peace. <laughs>